This is what's called a rail bolt. We use them a lot in the stair building industry when installing handrails. Okay, that's about the right size. Just a little smaller drill bit is. Measuring my thread depth on my drill bit so I know where to stop. You can also put a piece of tape here at the end and wrap it around your drill bit. I normally use glue, but I'm going to use polyurethane to kind of lubricate this. Also act like a little glue. Okay. I like using glue in general. But as you see, my battery's done. All right. Okay, put your verse on your drill and undo it, and it releases. There you go. Just below an inch and a half. Okay. Right to these shoulders. All right, now that's gonna go down an inch and a half. Now this is a rail bolt driver. I forget what this nut's called, but uh, this is on a rail bolt. Okay, this is locks it in place with the second nut, and this goes in here, and you're ready to drive. Okay. Okay, I'm getting ready to drill a one inch hole in the face of this. Now I'm going to put a plug in it, a one inch plug. Now if you see this is flush, then it sticks out about an eighth of an inch. Okay, and how you do that is you get to take your one inch flat, okay, spade bits, and you put it on your belt sander and you just, just take off this side about a 32nd, this side about a 32nd, or a little more, so no more than a 16th, and then it will be smaller than your plug, and your plug will have a nice tight fit that you glue into place. Okay, I've gone down, I've drilled down about an inch and a half, and then my mark is about three eighths, okay above my inch and a half mark. That's a one inch. So let's do this. All right. All right. I need, I'm going to back up my bolt a little bit, but I also am going to make this a little bit deeper and this kind of broke. I was afraid where that crack was at, was that was going to happen. I'll glue this back in. All right, so now I'm going to drill into this and make it a little deeper. Then I'm going to take this chisel and that's to cut that out with the 5 8 so I have room for adjustments. I want to kind of dig this out and uh, back off the screw, the bolt, the rail bolt that I have here at this point. All right, I need to make it a tad shorter. So I just will screw it in there a bit. Right now we'll just take this down a little bit, shorten it up so that the bolt and the washer will fit on here, down in that hole. Right now we can check it. Okay, we need to make this washer curved. And the quickest, easiest way to make it curved so it fits this hole just like this. Bam! 
All right, now I can test it. Okay, I'm gonna now I'm gonna do the other side a little bit. Okay, let's grab the edge, pinch it, and then give it a little smack. Now it's concave, it will fit the hole, so let's show you what's going on here. Alright. Okay, now this will fit in here just like this. See how it fits in there really nice, takes on that curve. Now I can put the bolt on. Okay guys, gals, this is where it gets tricky. Alright, you gotta hold the washer up in place. There's several techniques and methods for doing this. This is a tool. Alright, you can now I've usually you're not doing it where it's upside down. All right, now it's got a magnet on it. Okay, now I'm going to try to slip this off of here using the point of my pencil and holding it on. Okay, that didn't work. So with the magnet, this makes it nice for getting it out of there. Okay. Um, if you can get it in there, sometimes you have to use two pencils. Or if you can get it started and get it turned with your pencil. Alright. Ah! But you see that, you see the idea of what's going on here. Okay, if you don't have a magnet, you just get you a nail or something. Take out your bolt. Alright. Now I'm going to get this washer on there again and if uh, I don't get it this time I'm going to get it on there so I don't burn up tape and uh, do you have the... now I'm going to put this nut ah, right now okay as you see it's wanting to come off and so I'm going to get this on so we don't sit here and watch me do this, waste your time. Okay, now, if I come over the top of this, where I can see, and I can push, okay. Ah, there we go. All right, now. I can put that in where it goes. I can take this wrench and I can very slowly work this nut. Now, maybe I can get it to spin a little more freely. And it is. All right. Then you take your wrench. You get these little bitty quarter and eight inch turns. Uh, just got to be patient. It's tightening down. All right. And then I'm going to glue in the piece that goes in here. And it'll look good as new. This is what you normally don't see. And uh, thanks for watching. So get this adjusted. Now let's do an overview of this. Take her off zoom. All right. Zoom out. It's not the one into there we go. Now that's the Custom seat. All right, you see the roundovers for the legs. All right, here is the elbow armrest. Okay, it's for for here. 
All right, fits comfortably. And then here we have the footrest. But you can just kick back. You can just kick back here. Your armrest. And your footrest. And you're good. Now let me show you. This footrest, footstool, is really cool. I like it that sanded and stained. That wood's just going to come alive. And uh, there's a rock that grew into this. All right. And uh, this is really unique. And um, there's the back side of what. Look what's behind that bark. Look at that cool design. You never know what kind of design's hiding behind your bark. All right. So that's the footstool. Bam, the footstool. Goes like this. How cool is that? Okay. Well, like, subscribe, share. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now and God bless. Catch you on the next one. Stay tuned for the update on the custom stump chair. Yeah.